Aha! Is that working? Oh, the technicals, the technicals. I think we're working. I think. Move that over there. Switch this to all chat because I want to see all the messages, not just a few of them. Thank you. And let's make sure we're in focus. Yes. Woohoo! That's working. Yay! <laughs> oh, I couldn't get Twitch to connect again today. I think I'm going to have to rethink Twitch. I don't know. It's getting annoying having to mess about with stuff. But, see, the trouble is it's an extra source of income, doing a, a stream over there. But if I can't rely on it, it's a nuisance. So, but I just had an email the other day saying that YouTube is offering me a fan club upgrade where I can do extra videos on YouTube for subscriptions. So, I don't know. I already do that on Patreon, so... I don't know. I don't know. But I have to rethink it. I need to work out how much I make off Twitch and whether it's just easier to come over here and do Friday Crafternoon. I quite enjoy Friday Crafternoon over here. I just wish we could play music. Hi Cody, Susan, Meredith. I assume you can all hear me and everything. Um, let me see if I can get a bit more view of the desk, which is a mess. Because yesterday we were making stuff. Oops. I've got a new clamp coming tomorrow. I can't wait. <laughs> I finally got around to ordering it. I've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And it finally I said, you know what? This is ridiculous. <laughs> I can't be messing with this every five minutes. Yes, yeah, so this is the mess left from yesterday. Hey, Holly. Hope you're doing well. Oh, it's a bit chilly. I've had to put the heating on. Hi, Alan. Yes, this is the mess that is left from yesterday when we did a Halloween hangout over on Patreon, which was fun. Uh, we did some astrology and a tarot reading for the craziness that is... Oh, <laughs> of course Twitch didn't work today. It's Mercury Retrograde. And my car's off the road again. You can tell when it's Mercury Retrograde, my car stops working. Because <laughs> it happened last time as well. And the time before that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me put my my smellies on. I've got a I've got a wax candle in here, and I put it started off bright blue. It started off this color blue, like turquoisey blue. Actually, it was more this color. It's like turquoisey blue, Mediterranean blue. And I put some frankincense in it, and it turned bright purple. It's very cool, and it smells amazing. So, okay, I'm just going to tidy this mess up a little bit while we get chatting. Let me move this over because where I've got my camera positioned, I can't quite see what's going on with chat. There we go. That's better. Now I can see chat better. So um, my line of sight is a little bit off from the camera, but that's so I can see chat. That's as close as I can get it. It's nice, isn't it? I'll show you it in a minute, actually, because I've got some... Actually, I've got something I want to do with that while I've got the material out. So that's kind of cool, actually. That will that will be my first port of call when I've tidied up this mess. Um, let me see if I can... I could do with moving this so that it stays up there a little bit better. A bit closer to there. Let me see if I can put an elastic band on that. And then tilt this up a bit. There we go. That's better. 
it's not great you're still gonna not see some bits but it's a little bit better you can see most of where I'll be working yeah this mess this has got to be tidied so that's what we're gonna do first while we chat um, what am I doing at the moment oh I know I'll give you some information um, for one night only Halloween I've done a discount in the shop romanysrealm.org.uk link is down below in the description if you want a tarot reading a astrology reading or you'd like to book me for a one-to-one -one session for something for your grimoire or a spell help thing or an art help thing a tutorial you know just two hours with me to go through something that you need some help with uh, that you think I can help you with um, all of those are currently 10% off if you use the code SPOOKY capital letters so romanysrealm.org.uk link is actually there as well and down in the description that's for any astrology reading tarot reading or one-to-one -one session we call it rent a row <laughs> that's what the first girl who ever I think it was Andrea was the first person to ever book it and she called it rent a row she said I want I want a rent a row session what do I book so I set one up for her and a few people have asked for them since so um yeah 10 percent off with the code spooky all caps that runs until uh sometime tomorrow or possibly midnight tonight i set it up for a little bit longer than just halloween because i know some people get paid on the 31st some people get paid on the friday some people are in a different time zone australia is already in tomorrow you know it's very confusing so when i say one night only i literally I, I set it up for like 36 hours or something to cover all the time zones because I know not everybody gets paid at the same time. So that's our, my little Halloween treat for you. I've also got two discount codes for my bulk buy classes, which I run this time of year. Halloween Chronicles, Christmas Chronicles and next year's When Frogs Sing 2020. Those discount codes are on my Instagram in my stories. There's a if you go to my profile underneath there's a link for all the different types of stories because I save everything I'm a pack rat um, the only limit on my saving things is when Instagram says I'm sorry your highlight is full <laughs> and then I have to start deleting stuff um, but yeah there's a, a little button in there that says discount codes and if you go in there you can find the discount codes for the class stuff if you've already purchased Halloween Chronicles, Christmas Chronicles, whatever, and you want to upgrade to a new deal or you want to add a class or you want to do something like that, email romanysrealm at gmail.com or me, romany at gmail.com, either will do. You'll get either me or Mika and we will figure out how you upgrade so you can pay the difference between a better offer than what you've already got. You know, because I'm not mathematically minded and sometimes I offer you something and then you go, well, actually, if I pay this, I actually get a better deal. And I'm quite happy with that. So, you know, <laughs> just ask and we will figure it out. Um, this Saturday, this Saturday, five o'clock, 5 p.m. GMT. Clocks have changed here. So, uh, yeah, 5 p.m. GMT for me your clocks don't change some of you don't change until this weekend so double check but i am on gmt now zulu time aka military time so 1700 uk uh saturday is the halloween party which is open to all students and subscribers so i will post that over on my patreon as a public post any of you who want to come along or sit on YouTube and watch or whatever you can do that uh, but I don't put it as a general public thing because it is just for my subscribers um, so those of you who know where to find me know where to find me <laughs> um, we're also having a Christmas party 
on the 22nd of December? The last Saturday, anyway. Uh, oh, hello, Miss Maddie. Do you want to come and say hello? Do you want to come and say hello? Come on. Yeah, my my times have changed. I did I did post it in the alumni board, which is where most people can find me. Again, that's for all students and subscribers, past and present. That's my witchy community. So if you want to come and join us over there, we do all sorts of witchy stuff and journal stuff and grimoires and just, we have lots of fun. Um, that link is also down below. <sighs> Christmas party, I think, let me double check the date. I've got to turn my calendar over today because I haven't done it anyway. So for November, we have, oh, my November, oh no, that's November. Uh, we've got kitty cats and scruffy dogs. I love scruffy dogs. I like you too, beautiful, but I like scruffy dogs. Scruffy dogs are fun. I can't believe I'm nearly at the end of the calendar. Uh, the Christmas party is the 21st, sorry. Again, five o'clock on the 21st. Um, because <laughs> I appreciate that a lot of us are introverts and a lot of us aren't actually going out to parties or anything like that. We'd rather stay home. So, you know, if you would rather stay home and spend an evening crafting with us, bring your coffee or your mulled wine or your hot chocolate, whatever it is, and come along and come along and play. Uh, we hang out on Zoom, and again, that will be on YouTube and public on Patreon for anyone who wants to come along and play. You saw I announced it, but for some reason it didn't connect. Because your head is in, oh, my clocks don't change till next week, so that doesn't affect me. But it does affect you because your clocks don't change till next week. <laughs> Um, was there any other announcements? Because I like to get it all out of the way and then it's all done and finished and we can forget about that bit. Uh, oh, yes, there was one. Somebody asked a question. Could you pay, instead of paying for a class all in one go, could you pay for it in bits? Um, existing students. So if you already are paying for a class or have paid for a class, um, then yes, you can. Just email, again, either me or Mika on Romany realm at gmail.com or romany at gmail.com let us know what you want to do and how you want to pay and you know sometimes people want to pay over two months or three months or eke it out over christmas or whatever that's fine um as long as you're paid ready to start the class um i usually say as long as you're paid by the end of january uh, for next year that's fine um but you can work it out yourself with mika and failing that if you would prefer you can do um, there is an offer to do the Halloween Chronicles and the Christmas Chronicles up front, which are cheaper classes. And then next year, there will be the option to pay monthly for When Frogs Sing 2020, and that's through Patreon. Uh, again, if you are an existing student who already pays outside of Patreon, you can continue to do that. Um, but new signups are all going through Patreon now because it's just easier to manage it. Staying in and crafting is better than going out than where it's too peopley outside. Exactly. I would love going outside if it was just... If if only the people who had a dog with them were out. <laughs> like it is on a Sunday morning. You know, the old people who've gone to church and the, the, the people with dogs, like a Sunday morning, I'd be quite happy. But it's a bit too peopley. <laughs> And there's too many drunk people and I don't like driving when I don't like driving over the holiday season anyway. Uh, I'm always sober sister and I will take people for lifts and things. But I really don't like driving because I don't trust other people not to drink. Um, so, yeah. <sighs> I'd rather stay home with the dogs. Plus, people have a tendency to sell fireworks from the 1st of October here right the way through to pretty much the beginning of February <laughs> and my dogs don't like fireworks well Scooby couldn't care less he can't hear them over the sound of his own snoring but Maddie hates fireworks absolutely hates them they terrify her um, and I try to ignore her and just put lots of noise on so she can't hear them um, but she still tries to climb on my head I'm just trying to tidy up my desk so I've got room to do stuff 
once I know what I've, I've got room to do stuff, I can actually start doing something. I want to bind my book, actually, because I've got to stop adding things to my current signature because it's getting a little out of hand. When you're able to get together, it's nice, but you sort of but you're sort of isolated. That's why I love. That's why I love North Dakota. Oh, I missed a sentence. Right. That's why I love North Dakota. It's a whole state of weather-induced introverts. When you're able to get together, it's nice, but otherwise you're sort of isolated. Yeah. High days and holidays, like you know. Oh, it's it's going to be a nice evening. Not too sunny. Not going to rain. Let's have a barbecue. <laughs> mind getting together with people I mean I'm going to my my urban sketches have just um, texted me this morning they're organizing a going out for a Christmas meal on the Sunday no the Friday they've booked a table and they've asked me if I want to go so you know I'll probably go along to that because it's just going to a restaurant sitting around with people I know really well and chatting about stuff that I really enjoy. So, you know, it's not like going to a works party where you're going to sit with people that most of whom you don't like and you don't want to spend days with, let alone evenings with. I'm getting good about recycling my paper bits. I no longer keep, I keep black paper because I use black paper a lot, but if it's just little scraps like this of white paper, I no longer keep them. I'm getting very good about putting them in the bin. Uh, I may need those. That's for a page in progress. So I'm going to keep those. I'll put those separate to there. Uh, this is all stuff I need to go through and see if I can shove in my journal or ditch it. I'm kind of on a use it or lose it thing, as uh, Courtney would call it. If it's, if it's not seen the light of day in a long time and it's still hanging around and I haven't used it yet, then it needs in the, either needs to go in a journal or it needs to go in the bin. Because if I haven't used it in four years, <laughs> the chances of me actually using it, minimal. Okay, we get in there. We get in there. Look. Oh, what's that one? No, I don't need that one. The header from my book. Scrap of material. I've been using that for my things. The... <sighs> I bound a book the other day. Rookie mistake. I bound my book and I left my whole thing that I use, which I haven't managed to lose in over a year. I'm impressed. Um, but I left it in the book. So I sewed it in the book and I've taken out. So now I've got to make a new one. That's why it's pinned together so I don't lose the two pieces. <laughs> so if I do sew a book together today, I've got to do that as well. Do you want to have a look at my journal? I'm, look, I'm I'm kind of tidy. This doesn't look tidy, but it's actually a box of bits. It gets under my shelf there. That's a book and my iPad. I've got my bag of bits over here that everything's in, and then I got my pencils. And I'm actually really organised. These are bits that I'm in progress with, so I'll put those under there. Ugh. Oh. Fireworks doing your head in there. It's where someone nearest buys industrial grade ones as well. Oh, they are ridiculous. I don't mind an organised firework display if I know when it is and where it is and it's organised and etc etc. I appreciate that there are some people who enjoy them and I don't mind them. But when you've got random people buying basically just bangers from a shop and setting them off in the street, that drives me insane. <laughs> hey, Mara. Hi, Zen. Use this back as background noise. You've got to work in 10 hours. Ah, off to sleep then. Put us on low. We'll have you asleep in no time. Don't worry. <laughs> um, this is my... Maddie! Seriously, leave your feet alone. Oi! Oi! Stop chewing your feet. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. 
stop you chewing your feet. Where's the other one? I don't know where the other one went. He's probably sat in the kitchen staring at me. That's his latest thing. You can buy these on like, um, these are the trade, fair trade books. Um, you can buy them on like Amazon, eBay, pretty much anywhere. This is actually a different one. Uh, it's not one of the fair trade ones. It was given to me as a gift. Um, but unlike the fair trade ones, which have rag paper in, which is really nice to use, this had grotty, horrible paper in that I hated. I tried to work with it. I wanted to work with it because it looks really nice, but it's not really nice. So I gutted it. Um, it looks like we have got another one here. Yeah, he's sitting in the kitchen staring at me. Why are you staring at me? I've got another one here, which is a B6 size. This paper, it looks beautiful. It feels nice. But you can't do anything with it. I can't even write on it properly in ballpoint pen because it just clogs up the pens. Um, it doesn't like water. Water of any kind just soaks right through the paper. Um, and I don't like using gesso with watercolour. So yeah, this is going to have to come apart as well, which is a shame because I don't like to waste that much paper. But if I can't use it, I can't use it. So these are bound with leather thongs. Oh, this one's got string, but the other one had leather. And literally all I did was grabbed a few sheets at a time. And in order to not hurt the binding, ooh, this paper doesn't tear as easily. Maybe this is different paper. I'll have to check. I'll have to test it, but I'm sure it's not the same. I'm sure it's the same paper. Um, it might be easier to use a ruler. Oh, I should use a ruler. It's mildly annoying. The other one tore really easily. So I tear it out like that and like that. And what you're left with is just the strings, which means you don't lose all this prettiness on the back because I love these bindings. OK, so that's how I gutted it. Once I'd finished doing that, I was left with this. Um, these were straight. They weren't tied together, but they were really loose because obviously they'd had a massive load of paper in them. So all I did was I bunched them together and I tied them up with a bit of thread. I just wrapped thread around them. Uh, and I knotted this, I twisted this together so it would stay out of the way. Uh, this doesn't look very nice. So one of the things I was thinking of doing was using a bit of this, um, which actually matches the inside perfectly, uh, to just cover it over. So I might do that. Um, so it's got four strings, so it's technically a traveller's notebook at this point, which I quite like. Um, I strung it like that. Simple enough. You just go up, down, up, down, up, down, tie it off. <laughs> you do a little bit more if you want it to look nice on the outside, but that's all you really need. And then I put a thing on it so I could close it up. And because it's wider than the paper I'm using, it doesn't get gator mouth, which I really like. So the paper is a five width and the book itself is actually slightly bigger. So it's five and a half inch paper, but the book itself is seven inches. So not only does it not get gator mouth because it closes over the edges, even if it was like this wide, it would still not get gator mouth. It would still close. Um, but also I can put really big tabs and stuff on and they don't stick out the edge. Because that's what I hate about tabs, sticking out the edge. We don't do sticking out the edge. I don't like anything that sticks out of the edge. It, this paper clip bugs me because it sticks out slightly. <laughs> so on the first one, I've just got some sheets of paper. This is just blank paper, drawing paper. Uh, I've got a sheet of watercolour paper. I've got some moleskin sketchbook paper, a bit of Hobonichi paper. I've got a really nice cream um, good quality envelope page, all sorts of bits just for drawing on um, because it's too hard to include blank pages specifically for drawing on when I'm making the book. 
I can't quite work my head around that. So what I do is I do this. I draw something and sketch it on a sheet of paper or a journal card and I put it into my journal afterwards. So let me see if I can twist you this way a little bit. That's better. There you go. You can see a little bit better now. So you do all your shopping online. Yeah, I, I do all my shopping online. I don't mind doing my grocery shopping on sh shopping in the shop, but I'd rather just get the um, yeah Sainsbury's have banned fireworks, haven't they? So have Morrison's, and the the range is the only place I've seen fireworks readily available for sale but even they have started doing it only for people with driving li driver's licenses over the age of 21 which doesn't really discount the idiots but you know manny leave your feet alone stop chewing your feet it's a habit now stop it no no she wants a belly rub hang on belly rubs for maddie dork Dorcas. <sighs> yeah, I'd love to see lots of places just not selling fireworks unless it's. I think they should only be available to organisations and like groups and stuff. I mean, the, the football team over the road puts on a massive firework display every year. I have no idea why anybody else needs to do one. <laughs> OK, so this is this bit is unbound. This signature is unbound. This is my um, well, it's not in order. So it's kind of September into October and eventually into November. And this is my Halloween Chronicles journal. So this one is just, it's just whatever I feel like putting in it, honestly. Pictures I like, images I like, spells, um, bits of, I've got bits of information about crystals and stuff that I want to transfer into my other book. Um, I've got a, this was interesting, how to make a, the most of a solo trip. And it had some really interesting stuff for introverts. It even has take your sketchbook as part of it so I decided to put that in there uh, just as a interesting bit you'll see that there's a lot of places that don't have writing yet because I'm not working chronologically I'm just working wherever I feel like this folds out I've got something specifically to go on that page the full moon in Aries Photo of Maddie creeping on me. These are just from a calendar that I had that I really like the pictures on. So I'm gradually going through. I've taken all the orangey ones and I've put those in here. And then I've got some that kind of pinky purple ones that I might use for the Christmas journal. I'm not sure yet. I found some awesome vintage pizza advertisements they're all old pizza boxes it was a, a thing in a magazine about a guy who collects uh limited edition pizza boxes and vintage pizza boxes unused uh and i thought this one was good it says better better the devil you know because <laughs> i'm a huge pizza fan in case you weren't aware uh doggos it's just all sorts of bits and pieces really Miss Maddie with her velociraptor claws. I don't know what's up with their nails lately, but they won't stop growing. I've cut them three times in the last six weeks, which is a bit ridiculous. This is a design for what I'm going to do with my Wheel of the Year thing that we've been doing in class. I think most of you have seen this. It's nearly finished. So this is what I'm going to do with it is to turn it into a, a quilted thing with a, a hang so I can hang it above my altar. That'll be cool. Something a bit crafty to do. All my new washi tapes, because I went a little bit wild with the washi tapes. I always do it this time of year because the Halloween ones come out. Uh, and I got some space themed ones there as well.
uh, magazine article on how to use up discarded pumpkins. Uh, did you know that if you place your pumpkin near an existing ant colony uh, with a drop of honey inside it, the ants will come to the gourd and eat it for you? Pretty cool. Scorpio season. Uh, this is a cutting from a magazine that I'm going to write onto there, but I haven't got around to it yet. I tend to have nights where I'll sit and watch a movie or something or binge watch a TV show. And that's when I tend to do my writing. So I quite often have little bits and pieces that I've kept that I know where they're going to go, but I haven't done them yet. This is all for Scorpio season. So sun in Scorpio. Dark Moon in Scorpio. This was a tarot reading through from Ethany, and I did. I used her. Well, the spread was from her, and I did my own tarot reading to clarify. This is um, a little thing I'm going to do for Mercury retrograde. My tarot layout. I took a photo of it and just pin put it in there. My little witch. Uh, I don't like putting originals into like stuck down in journals just in case i don't know just in case of what but just in case so i just created a little pocket and i used my sigil underneath i do that a lot with with art stuff is put my sigil underneath halloween i basically just had this halloween night card and i just threw everything halloween on it <laughs> Uh, I've got a mantra here, a double-sided mantra from a magazine that I really like the images of. I'm not I'm not particularly into um, mantras, uh, but I did like the images on these two. The story of Mildred and her cat. The cat is terrified of flying on a broom and she has to disentangle him from the broom every time she lands. <laughs> I thought that was really funny, so I just stuck it in there as a full story. I haven't done anything with it. A creativity ritual um, which I want to adapt which is why that's in there because I'm going to rewrite it I do that a lot with stuff I find in magazines I find if I like it, the basic premise I'll either put it into my journal or I'll change it and put it into my journal as something that I can use at a later date hey Cassie hey Rach hey Katie They've, a lot of the online stores here, I'm quite annoyed actually, it's it's really annoying for those of us who don't have a thousand people to shop for. A lot of the online stores have changed their minimum delivery amount from £25 to £40. I don't spend £40 on food in a month, let alone when I need it. I mean, I, I will spend, I can stretch to 25 for two weeks because I'll buy extra bread and put it in the, the freezer or something like that. Or I'll buy some frozen meals and put them in the freezer for days when I can't be bothered to do anything more than chuck it in the microwave. Which is pretty much what I do anyway. Um, hey Jen. But yeah, they've just upped it from... It's, you, it's either you pay £25, which is hard to reach for me anyway. And then they charge you an extra £5 because you haven't put £40 worth in. So you pay £30 for £25 worth of stuff, plus your delivery charge. So you're almost at £40 anyway. Or you try and make it £40 worth of food, which I can't do. There's no way I could make it £40 worth of food. So I have to do my own shopping because they won't deliver it. Some more bits on foxes because foxes keep cropping up for me lately. Are you going to print the bits I sent? Yes, I am. I just haven't got round to it. I've been busy, Amber. <laughs> I'm sure they will. I've got to Photoshop some of them to stretch them straight, that's all. Because they're photographs rather than scans. So I've just got to reposition them. So that they print square instead of slightly wonky. I'll try one this weekend so you know that they work. <laughs> Uh, this was from a, a previous journal that I'd taken out. 
but I like the quotes on it so I put it back in again. This is the creepiest thing I've ever seen. Look at that creepy clown. I mean if that doesn't go belong in a Halloween journal I don't know what does. Like seriously creepy cr clown and he's he's advertising bread and biscuits. Dressed up as it. I mean hello? No 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 no. Uh, then I've got my astrology thing, which is a fold out. This was the Patreon printable this month. Um, so you can print this out double sided. I had one here somewhere just now. Did I throw it away? Oh, oh there it is. So you get the printable and you print it double sided like this. And then you cut it out. And then you can do the same thing with it. Or you can fold it in half and have it like with this bit here if you've got a wider journal or whatever um, but it fits a traveller's notebook so it works in a junk journal this has just got a tag in it I'll probably swap that because it's just coffee and I, much as I like my coffee it's not really a winter coffee oh well it is it's got books and yeah it's got books and astrology and firelight so I suppose it'll I suppose it'll work I might move it to November I might use it in November. A uh, couple of bits. This is just a thing that I've saved as a reference. Uh, I've got a doggo there because I like to put pictures of dogs in my journals. That's my go-to. If I don't have anything else to do, I put a picture of a dog in my journal. Speaking of dogs, this has got a special thing to go on it, which my patrons will know about, but... I haven't put out publicly yet because I don't want the person to see it before it arrives. Just from a magazine, but I really liked the dog peeking around the thing. <laughs> you like the printout? Oh, cool. Thank you. I might do that again, actually, because normally I just do like a I just write it up on the, the iPad and let you print it out however you want. But. I kind of like the, the little fold out thing because even if you just have a normal journal you can still do it as a little fold out and just stick it in as a tip in because it's small enough to fit a Midori Traveller's notebook. So this is all basically for uh, November now. Um, November is always a busy month because I'm setting up the Christmas Chronicles which is a lot of work, a lot more work than the Halloween Chronicles. Plus we're actually still working on the Halloween Chronicles because um, it's it's just got a bit out of hand with not having a an admin for a while everything got a bit behind <sighs> but yesterday we did a session for the hangout we did a hangout where we did the astrology and tarot for november and then afterwards we just all hung out on camera and did our own thing so you could watch what other people were doing or you could join in or whatever it was quite fun it was uh there was about three or four of us were journaling on camera and about 12 of us all together sitting, you know, quite a few people just sitting watching. Um, so this is just, this is my cover. I love this bat paper. I think it's awesome. <laughs> so I didn't want to cover up too much of it, but the front just didn't look right blank, but I can leave the back blank, right? Do I still need an admin? I have an admin now. Mika is my admin. I don't think she's here at the moment. She had to do some shopping or something, I think she said. Um, but yeah, um, Mika is now my admin, but it's still Realm at gmail.com. Uh, it's just a different person will be answering you. So I printed my cards out. I've only done the first half. Um, which is what I mean by being behind. I'm so behind. <laughs> so I've printed the first half and instead of just printing like the two pages of the PDF like this, I did this one and then I decided I didn't like it. So I printed it out small size, two pages to a page, and then I folded it in half and I trimmed off all the edges so it became a journaling card, but it's not too um, thick. You were going to volunteer as tribute. Oh, well, thank you. I'll uh, I'll make a note of that, Katie. And should I ever need an admin in the future, I will let you know. Um, 
it's always handy to know if I've got somebody because there are there is stuff that has to be done every day and uh, you know if Mika goes on holiday or is sick or whatever then I'm stuck doing it and oof, I have enough to do <laughs> Uh, I don't I think sometimes people don't believe me that I I work literally from the minute I get up to the minute I go to bed except when I actually post on Instagram and say no sod it I'm taking the night off I'm going to go and watch Sabrina. Anyway, I posted uh, I printed all the journal cards all the PDFs as journal cards and popped them in a pocket there because I decided I didn't want them in here. I didn't like the way they looked. Hi. I don't know why. I mean, they're my PDFs, but I just didn't like it. Um, I thought it broke everything too, uh, up too much. What's the matter, my sweet? What's the matter with my Maddie? What's the matter? Do you need to go potty? Do you need a biscuit? Do you need a drink? You need a belly rub? You got sticky eyes you need me to clean? Sticky eyes, okay. There we go. Sticky eyes. There we go. Sticky eyes. Ew. Or even an extra set of hands. Yeah. Thank you, Casey. I'll uh, I'll make a note of that. I do have a couple of admins on the Trello boards um, um, who help me out with moderating and keeping conversations going and stuff, but. Uh, one of the best things you can do is keep the conversations going on the um, alumni board, actually, because there's so many people with so many introverts. It's quite hard to get a lot of people to actually talk to each other. <laughs> so the more people I can convince to actually post on the Trello board, the better the community is. So it's journal feel more like a textbook when there's journal and then journal fun. Mm. Yes, I exactly. That's exactly it. I don't like the fact that there's typed stuff. I, I like it like this. I like this because then it's information. And I can always take these out and put them in my file of facts if I want to. Um, when I've finished doing all the pages, you know, they're only here for reference for what I want to do for, you know, like looking at the journal ideas and stuff. Um, because I have no memory whatsoever. And even though I wrote the PDFs, I can't remember what the prompts are. I can't even remember what the 13 things are that we did. <laughs> That's how bad I am at remembering stuff. If it's not something I'm currently working on, I don't I don't think of it. It doesn't. Ugh, I don't know. I'm I'm very much in the present, <laughs> not in the not in the past or the future. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, so the first prompt was uh, ghosts and poltergeists um, and I've done ghosts and poltergeists before so instead I concentrated on one of the prompts uh, researching the old ways of ghost hunting, mediumship, spirit boards, the Victorian era of scientific research and such. Um, this is all decorated at the moment, I have done the research but I haven't written it in yet. Again that's something that I'll do when I've got my notes in front of me and I'm just sitting watching a film. I just copy my notes in. Um, so I put this bit of vellum. I had this bit of vellum that was really pretty and I thought it looked kind of like the, you know, when they, they'd had the brocade curtains in the, vin, in the Victorian parlours. Um, and whenever you see a seance or something, they've always got these big, beautiful curtains in the background. So I thought that was kind of cool. And also because it's vellum, lifting the veil. See what I did there? Lifting the veil. <laughs> oh, come on. It was good. Uh, and then this is going to be a page on spiritism. And I've got a, a list of famous adepts. And I'm going to do some stuff on um, Alan, Co uh, Alan Kovec. Kovec? Kavek. Uh, I'm not sure that's his name. I know it's AK and I know it's not his real name. I can't remember. Alan. It's Alan with two L's. Kavek. I'm sure it's Kavek. Um, he was the one who worked with uh, the, the Fox sisters in America and then brought spiritualism over here. It started as spiritism and then became spiritualism. 
Ooh, clever. I can hear how, how much sarcasm is in that, Rach. I can hear you saying that. <laughs> I thought it was clever. Um, so, yeah, so this is going to be the 1800s to the 1900s when it was came over to Britain and France. Um, and he started getting people like Victor Hugo and Arthur Conan Doyle and everybody into it. And then this bit, this bit keeps coming apart, but it all folds up like this. And then this bit is just a really interesting thing from a book on a Yuki Ona, which is a specific type of Japanese spirit. Um, Japanese spirits are phenomenally complex and interesting, and I love them. Uh, they always have... You know, we have, oh, uh, you know, this girl was left by her lover and she drowned herself in the river. Uh, they have this 20 year old girl who was five foot two with black hair and blue eyes, drowned herself in the river because her lover, who was a merchant, you know, there's this whole long, complicated, convoluted story that goes with it. Um, and it's very specific. And then that particular ghost will have a name. It's like, you know, having a grey lady and going, oh, yeah, that one's Karen, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but I love the story of Yukiona. Um, she's the, the lady of the snow. Um, and then inside is this fold out. It's a tip in that way as well. So I've got some more room on here because I didn't know how much room I'd need. So if I need it, I've got some there. And if I don't need it, I can just put stick this down. But I think I'll probably just put a photograph of here somewhere. I might get a photo of the Fox sisters and print it out, you know, like the vintage sepia photos. Ooh, that's a good idea. I might do that and put the fi a pi picture here with their names. Um, so this is going to be about the Fox sisters because they they were hoaxers, actually, but they started spiritualism. Or well, they sp started off the spiritualist movement by getting all these people like Adam Kovac, Alan Kovac, into contacting the dead and seances and stuff. It's fascinating history. So basically, spiritualism and spiritism came about from a couple of girls having a lark <laughs> and realising they could make money off it. <laughs> I love it. It's so funny. Uh, this is just going to be, um, you know, some famous spectres and ghosts and things like that. I've got another one here that's going to be about haunted houses. I've actually put a thing on the back. Um, I really, really liked this one. It's unusual. Forabury in Cornwall. Forabury Castle in Cornwall has a long tradition of ghostly bells sounding from beneath the waves. They're supposed to have originated with the conveyance of by sea of new bells for the local church. All went well until the captain of the boat used profane language, whereupon a violent storm broke out and the ship sank with all hands. There are local people too who claim to have seen phantom boats with phantom crews rowing silently to the spot where the ship sank. It's really interesting. They cracked their toe knuckles for the wrapping, yeah. I just think it's hilarious because they they learned a lot of their tricks from Houdini, which is just is awesome. There's so much stage magic in seances. So with us Salem witch hunts. Oh, yeah, they weren't quite so funny, though. Um, and then we're on to vampires. So, of course, Dracul. Um I've got a, p a page here that I'm going to do about energy vampires and psychic vampires, actual vampire type stuff. Um, but this is just my fun page because I love Dracula. Um, I've got a little fold out here that's got bats all over it. There's a folder here that's like a medical folder that I was going to do on like Renfield syndrome and stuff like that because it is actually a, a thing. There's a Bloodsuckers of Southeast Asia on here. Potiniac of the of Malaysia the undead spirits of women who died in childbirth who are said to roam the neighbourhood where they live in search of victims creepy I love it, I love creepy stuff um, so this all lifts up 
And we can write some stuff in there, of course. And then this is just kind of an extra bit, but I kind of want to do a thing on time because I had this awesome card. So I turned that into a pocket in case I need to add anything. Um, but this is just a fold out that I can write on because time and ghosts and death and vampires and immortal life and all that kind of stuff it all to, is to do with time so i thought i'd bring all three of them together uh, and then this is an illustration from roald dahl's witches it's the grand high witch uh, and i just loved that and then the back of the the card because it's from a game called atmosphere 2 uh, it's actually got things on the back um if you're on a gravestone marked time move your stone to the nearest x <laughs> if you do it by a certain time so it's a timed game it's really interesting uh, and then we're on to the grim reaper section death and of course my favorite death oh she's fallen off again she doesn't stand up properly i need to make a stand for her i, heard, I thought i heard something fall down yesterday oh. there's my my pop death from the sandman Hey Mika, there's Mika, there we go, Moon Tiger's Pass, that's my, my admin. Um, yeah, this is my um, pop, vinyl pop of death from the Sandman, who I love, had it for many years, and I kept the box, and I finally found a use for it. <laughs> oh no, I've only just... I've only just started. I'm kind of here for a while. Sorry, I meant to tell you I was going on. Did I not tell you? Watching that makes me you want to junk journal. Excellent. <laughs> hey, Crow. I always notice your name because my, my cat was called Crow and it was Crow with an E. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is uh, the front and side of the box. So I turned this into a belly band. Uh, and then on the back of it, I've put the sound of her wings, which is part of the, the story. It's a Neil Gaiman story, The Sandman. Um, but death is awesome. And I dress like her. And I always have. And I miss my black hair. And I'm thinking about growing it out and dyeing it black again. <laughs> because why not, right? Or I might just get a black wig. I don't know. And then I've got a death tarot card page. Because you can't do Grim Reaper and t death and be witchy if you don't do a death tarot card. Because death is not about death. But it is number 13, which is always interesting. Um, and then I've got a, a Grim Reaper here. He's actually double-sided, but he keeps getting stuck because I made the band a little bit too tight. He's creepy on one side, but he's kind of cute on the other. And then this is all like pl different ways you can die. <laughs> basically <laughs> times run out plague <laughs> oh starve to death get sick get old <laughs> have you even got a mummy there <laughs> i think it's fun and then uh, the story that went with um the story that went with the death section or the Grim Reaper section, of course, was The Raven, Edgar Allan Poe, because it's literally about death uh, and a visit from death or death's messenger. So I had to do a Nevermore page because I love my ravens and I had this cool printout and that's how this happened because I wasn't going to not use the cool printout. Then we're on to the Black Shuck. Again, I haven't done any of my writing. I've got a lot of notes, but I haven't used any of them yet. So, a cute doggo. Not to be confused with hellhounds, which is what this is. This is a hellhound. The black shuck is completely different. And then, of course, the story for the black shuck, Hound of the Baskervilles. So, here we've got the Nine of Cups, but this guy reminds me of... Arthur Conan Doyle, Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Watson type guy. So I thought I would put him in there and then I can journal about 
Dr. Uh, Sherlock Holmes as well because I love the Sherlock Holmes stories. So I'm trying to incorporate lots of bits and pieces that are interesting to me rather than just this is what a black shuck is, this is what happened, this is where it comes from, blah 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 blah. That's boring to me. I just want to... Oh this flips up as well. And that bit of the page was about black shuck as well so I left that undecorated. And this is a stamp with the Hound of the Baskervilles. The scariest looking Hound of the Baskervilles I've ever seen. Um, and of course one of my favourite authors, my favourite stories, very sad story is the story of Cujo by Stephen King, which is about a dog that gets bit by a rabid raccoon or is it a raccoon or a skunk? I can't remember. He gets bit by a rabid animal anyway, and he goes mad uh, and does some horrible things. And he dies and it's very sad because he's St Bernard and he's cute. But it's one of my favourite stories by Stephen King. He really wrote it very well. You'd never know he loves dogs the way he writes. <laughs> <laughs> but he adores dogs uh, and then we're on to werewolves now this is as far as I've got fully decorated so that is that's done and I just need to add in my drawings my writings and my extra bits that make it a journal rather than just a collection of images and then from here on we're onto werewolves so I've got stuff in here that I've collected but I haven't got all of the stuff that I want to put in so this is a thing on clinical lycanthropy, which is an actual thing. Uh, a rare condition in which effective in, affected individuals believe themselves to be changing or to have been transformed into an animal. It's a form of psychosis. Recorded wild, widely in scattered parts of the world, but mostly in India and Ethiopia, where it's traditionally dealt with by exorcism. Oh, that's interesting. A recent neuroimaging study of two affected individuals revealed unusual levels of activity, unusual levels of activity in parts of the brain involved in body image. Ah, so it's linked to body dysmorphia. That's so interesting. And rabbit hole. That's what happens when I start reading about this sort of stuff. I find rabbit holes that I want to go and research. And that's the kind of thing that I will go and research, write some notes on, and then when I'm finished, I'll just tuck the notes in the pocket. Instead of writing them out again, uh, I'll just tuck the notes in the pocket so I know where they are. I've got a tarot card here, the Five of Swords, which is a from the Bohemian Tarot, which has got a werewolf and a maiden. Oh, you are husband. You're so floofy. Hello, friend. You're so floofy. Gerard. What? You don't make up stories with your ephemera? Isn't that what journaling's about? <laughs> you switched werewolves for kitsune. Yeah. They're, they don't believe in stuff like that. They don't believe in uh, zombies either, do they? They think zombies are hilarious because they don't bury the dead in Japan. Or it's not a common practice to bury the dead. Usually they they are cremated. So they don't have bodies to resurrect. Um, and then we've got Banshees. Uh, this is a... I'm pretty sure this video, this image is copyright Mignon. And it's a modern image that is made to look old. It's not a vintage image, so I'm just saying that. But it's personal use. It's my journal. So that's OK. So I'm not selling the image. It's my journal and I think she's beautiful. So I put her in there. So I've got a little bit about banshees here. They actually come from the word she, the women of the she, um, which are fairies. Most people don't know that banshees are fairies, but they are. Um, often mistaken or often believed to be actually barn owls. Because... Barn owls glow white at night. They're the only owls, or actually the only birds, that look white at night. There's a big scientific thing about um, their feathers have different refractions. That's where the dappling is, and it breaks up their silhouette. So when you look at a, a 
barn owl against the sky at night you can't see if it catches the moon it's got broken up image so it doesn't actually look like an owl so therefore I don't understand how it could look like a woman but maybe it does I don't know this is just all not done and then we've got one back here that I started last night that's for Kelpie I've had this I've had this scrapbooking paper for centuries <laughs> it was given to me I think in one of the very first scrapbooking swaps I did back in early 2000s and I've held on to it and held on to it I don't do sea stuff I don't do fish I don't do mermaids but I held on to this bit of paper and I finally found a use for it for my kelpie um, so the the water one was kelpies sirens and mermaids depending on what you wanted to do uh, and I went with the kelpie because kelpies are kind of cute but they kill children so hmm, maybe not they lure children to the water's edge and drown them for no apparent reason. It's, you know, bored one Saturday. And then that's basically it. Oh, I've got my Cerberus. My Cerberus is finished. He's a... Uh, don't know where he is. I've put him somewhere safe so I didn't break him. This was uh, our Patreon paint-along this month was to draw ink and paint him or colour him we coloured him in colour pencil um, he's on my Instagram uh, oh that's the notes I made for threading the bands on the spine so that's let me put that up there and focus it so if you want to know how to thread four strings on the traveller's notebook that's how you do it I will actually let's use that one because it's better written let me put it there and focus and if you want to screenshot it you can and that's how you thread the strings on the traveler's notebook to get four bands and if you want your your knot on the inside you start on the inside so this is the inside view and if you want your knot on the outside you do it on the start from the outside so it will be the outside view of your spine so there you go useful uh, and then what that does is it gives you this layout so you get hey luna uh you get like a crisscross effect up here of two stitches and then you get two separate stitches down here. But my signatures are getting too heavy. That's why the, the bands are pulling tight at the top. Uh, but I've got a spare string there so I can take the, the tension off with that. You just pull it like that. And it takes the tension off the spine. So I think what I need to do is this one is already sewn together because I keep taking it in and out um, and when I've finished it I'll swap it for my Christmas Chronicles journal uh, which starts December December 1st so this one is already stitched um, and I already have actually I have my this is only in here temporarily whoops Craft alarm! That's what happens when you leave 12 by 12 bits of paper out instead of putting them away. You could use your A5TN. Yes, you could! Absolutely. This is an A5. This is one of the A5 ones that I made. These are previous uh, videos. I used a, an A4 notebook that I knew I wasn't going to use and I recycled it into. Uh, I eventually made three of these out of the covers um, plus I had another cover spare so I was able to use make three all together um, but this actually I really like that I think see this is September I'll show you that one in a minute we're not getting much crafting done but you seem to like journal flips so I could put this one this has just got a traveler's notebook band on it for now which are 
These things are so handy. Oh, this one's not sewn, that's why. Oh, this one needs sewing together as well. So I think in a minute I need to stitch these two together. So let me take that one out of the way. And put that one on there for now. So I know where it is. Ugh. Ugh. There we go. Uh, yeah, I think this one would look good in here. Because of the purple and the red. And I can put... I can just put it on the band for now and stitch it in later. But I've got plenty of string left to just bind it on. Oops. Let's do it that way. I'm surprised you don't junk journal already. Cody with the amount of bits of paper you have and the the way the, the way you like sticking stuff down yeah I like it I don't mind this sticking out on one of these type books because it's a standalone book I won't be using it all the time for something oh I like that that feels really nice actually, it fits really nicely. It needs to be a little bit further over that way. There we go. Addie, stop chewing your feet. Oh yeah, I like it. That's going to be really cool when it's finished. Cool, I like. Maddie, leave your feet alone. Always chewing her feet. So this is another one that needs sewing together. This is my September into October. So this is, I think you've seen most of this one already. I'll just quick flip for those who haven't. I won't talk through this one because I've already done one, I think. So this is what I do with challenges and stuff. I just write them on bits of paper and put them in pockets. Because that way I can take it through the book with me and then put it in the pocket when I'm finished. This was already like this. This was a, a thing that Bun uh, had in one of her parcels that she sent. Uh, so I put this in. So it was like a tip in. It actually goes that way. Something a bit different. I like adding lot, lots of extras and something else I haven't done yet in my October journal is to go in and add paint. Again, that's something that I'll do when I feel like painting, I'll go in and add paint. I tend to do things, I don't work chronologically, I do things by type. So I'll do all my writing or I'll do a chunk of writing or I'll do a chunk of pasting or I'll do a chunk of uh, backgrounds or a chunk of painting or a chunk of sewing. It's just easier that way. So like yesterday I got my sewing machine out and I did some sewing in my Halloween journal. I haven't done as much sewing in these because I didn't have my desk set up at the time. But now that I've got my sewing machine right there where I can just lift it down and use it. These journaling cards are really handy for just popping a photo on with a title. So I cleaned my desk. <laughs> Yay, I hit desk. Oh, there's that turquoise candle that I was talking about. That's the colour of the candle. That's what it's called, turquoise sky. And it smells amazing. It's a musk and patchouli and all sorts of really nice things. And then I added frankincense to it and now it's just amazing. And it's bright purple. <laughs> the sewing's easier to do in chunks. Yeah, plus once you've sewn stuff, you can bind the book but it's a lot easier to not bind the book and sew things as you go that's why I don't like binding my books until I'm sort of at the stage where you know this one is now at the stage where I don't want to add any more pages and I'm past the middle of the book so I'm not going to swap the order of any of the pages anymore um, the most I will do is like I might have a like that blank page if I find I don't need a blank page I'll tear it out 
but I won't tear it all out. I'll like, um, I'll I'll tear, I'll leave like a strip, and then I'll washi tape that down onto another piece so it doesn't come loose. It's not literally tearing the page out. It's just saving the white paper. Um, same with cards and images and stuff. If I find that I want to keep them and or move them into a next journal like this, this is hasn't been used for Halloween. So once the book is bound or even before the book is bound, I could, you know, cut that off there and use it earlier in the book to put in a. Yeah, if you're not ready to commit. Exactly. I'm, I don't I'm not ready to commit. That's the beauty of junk journaling for me. And I think the reason I'm struggling with the other book that I've got is that I'm trying to use it as a junk journal and it's already bound. So I can't. So I'm going to have to rethink that one. Um, but this is what I like. You know, I, I even include, you know, like bits of this is my pen test page from a, a moleskin. I've got all sorts of bits in here. Oh, you've seen that already. That's not what I was showing you, is it? And this is what I was showing you. Here we go. Sorry. Ah! So this is a book page from a Haunted Houses book. I turned that into a pocket. I put a, I, I stuck a foam pumpkin on that I folded in half. I don't like them when they're full because they're too big. But as a little thing on the edge of the page, he's kind of cool. Um, Rachel sent me some cool bandanas, Halloween bandanas and stuff for the dogs. Uh, and this was on it, so that went in my journal, of course. Scooby, Le Scoob, a postcard from by Bun, which has got a creepy, creepy bunny on it. <laughs> uh, Fox Totem. This page I haven't done anything with yet. Um, there's quite often pages that I haven't done anything with, but sometimes when I've bound the book, I'll go back and I'll print out a photo that's relevant to that month and put it in. And then I've always got a journaling spot next to it to use as well. Uh, Scooby-Doo. Lots of pictures of my Scoob. Some pages I didn't use. I don't care if I don't use pages. Uh, this should have the... Um, the Mab's Drawloween thing. Actually, I think I've given up on that. So I might as well just put that back in its pocket because I, I think I'm never going to get to the end of that. I barely started it. <laughs> so I think I'll pop that back in there. There you go. That's better. Uh, this should have something in it as well. What should that have? Oh, that should have the Inktober prompts, but I don't know where the card is for that. Uh, this is an example of using those washi tape boxes. You know, the ones that the box came in. So I, I cut it up and I put it on the page like a pocket. And then I got the cards and stuff and popped them in there. It's just held down on one side with a bit of washi tape. And I also used the extra bit that had the fancy writing on. I don't know what the fancy writing is. It, it's to do with washi tape. But it looks nice. So I just put it up there as a tab. Um... And then I was given a gel polish machine, which I've always wondered whether I should get gel polish or not. But I love the fact that I only have to do my nails once a week. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm a convert. I haven't got any on at the moment because I didn't get a chance to do it. And then poor Hanky passed away. Miss Vicky B's Hanky. Um, and actually, I got to know Miss Vicky B. Uh, because we both had German Shepherds uh, and her her hanky has was blackface with a gold heart and Gypsy my German Shepherd was gold face with a black heart uh, and we said oh they've got the same markings isn't that cute you know my quest to get a blood test <laughs> whenever you get a ticket Every, everything in the NHS these days is get a ticket and I was in there doing all sorts of things so every five minutes it was take a ticket and wait take a ticket and wait and it reminds me of that bit in Beetlejuice where that's his number and they're on like number three <laughs> uh, this was actually one of the um, Mab's Drawloween challenges catacombs 
the face you make when you realise it's only the 7th of December of October. Because I'm a Halloween fan. This one's not finished yet. I've got some writing to do in here. I keep forgetting to do it. Um, and then this is uh, Caesar. Anybody who follows Team Caesar on, or Caesar, yeah, Team Caesar on Instagram will recognise Caesar as the dog who says yes and no. Um, with his new froggy. I sent the frog. That's why he's in my journal. I didn't just print off random, well, I have been known to print off random dogs and put them in my journal, but I tend to only put pictures of dogs that I know in my journal. Um, but he had had this frog for ages and he it got destroyed and they couldn't find a replacement. And I, I found a replacement and it was quite cheap. Um, so I bought it and I had it sent direct to her in Canada and he loves it. He carries it around with him. Look, he absolutely loves it. So, yeah, those need binding. I might do that. Shall I do that? Actually, I should. I probably should do that, actually. Because it's not going to happen unless I do it, is it? I've shown you how to bind books before, but I'll show you again. <laughs> Amber's obsessed with junk journaling. She can't stop. I should print a shrinker for my, my journal. You'll have to send me a good pick. Email me a big pic so I can print it out. Because Instagram drops the quality of your photos, so I can't steal it off your Instagram. So, this is the middle of this journal. And I don't, I'm never fussy about having things at a certain height or anything. I just kind of move stuff around. If it's too bulky at the bottom, I move a few things to the top. Um, but this one's okay. So, I get it like that. And I drop my ruler, because it's heavy, down into the crevice like that so that it holds the spine down and then I get a, a clip for this side and then I turn it around and I do the same thing and put a clip on the other side thicker on this side so it's a bit trickier whoops there we go sometimes you have to just nudge it down together like that okay now the book won't stay flat while while it's clipped like this that's to keep the spine together okay next thing we need <gasps> my paper thing so I think what I'm going to do is I think I can just actually I can probably just fold this in half I don't know where my clear ruler is I need to fold it straight I never measure anything but I need to fold it straight so Pencil. Okay. 
marked and I've already got the lines marked so and because I'm clever I wrote in so one inch and two eighths all the way down so I've just got to shift it to where my lines are no I need to come on think Think, Gary, think. One, two, three, four, no. Two, four, six, seven. Seven eighths. Two, four, six, seven. Seven. There's the first one. And then it's one and two eighths all the way down. No, it's not one and a one two eighths all the way down. It's the width of the ruler. I remember because I'm clever. See, I don't do things that require measuring. So there's the width of the ruler. And there's the width of the ruler. Apparently it was the width of my other ruler, but it's still pretty easy to do with this one. It's just a keep, case of keeping the ruler straight and the paper still. There we go. As much as you love paper craft, you also love watching others do it because it's so relaxing. Me too. I can watch people doing this all day. Uh, Joanna Clough is one of my favourites to watch. I always thought her name was Joanna Clough because that's how we would pronounce it. But Courtney Diaz actually knows her and she pronounces it as Clough. So I'm going to go with her pronunciation because they pronounce names funny over there. It's like... They pronounce Sean, which is a Welsh name, as Siam. It's very strange. Okay, so we put that under the clips as well. And then we gotta do the pushing. Now because this is not, um, it's not meant to lie flat, right? So ideally it needs to be like that. If you lie it flat, what happens is your bits in between will get separated and they won't punch nicely all the way through. So what I do is I have a magazine here somewhere that I use. Where's it gone? Where's my magazine at? Where's my magazine gone? Oh, there it is. Oh, magazines are good because they don't lie flat. You always get a bump in the middle. So go to about the middle of the magazine somewhere. Oh, which they've handily marked with a different colour paper. That's the middle of the magazine, apparently. It's useful. So then you put your book in there and you can hold it like that and punch down into the spine of the catalogue. It works better with yellow pages or something like that, you know, like really big thick ones. Or if you've got a book block you use, it, you can do that as well. And then when you do it this way, you'll actually be able to, oh, this side of the book is higher than the other side, how weird. You'll be able to punch through and it should go straight through the spine of the book. It nearly always goes a little bit off on one hole. But you know, I'm not that I'm not that fussy about it all being perfect. It's not like I'm selling them, I'm doing it for me. And I am far from a perfectionist. If 
you asked me what on the list of things that my junk journal needs to be perfect would not in any way shape or form be up there in fact it wouldn't make the list no matter how long the list was perfect would never make the list okay so that should have pierced right the way through onto the bend of the spine but because I've only pierced it slightly see I've got to push it all the way through now so yep yeah, that's on the that's on the bend that's on the bend whoops my all keeps coming apart I need to get some metal glue to stick that back together that's on the bend See, little to no effort it's all per perfectly lined up that's on the bend that one may be a little off no that's on the bend as well pulling down halloween decorations it's only the 1st of November. My Halloween st decorations stay up for Christmas. So I managed to punch all six of those holes, all, yeah, all six of those holes absolutely spot on right the way through the spine. Just by doing it that way rather than trying to do it flat. If you do it flat, it gets all out of whack. Okay, now rookie mistake I made last time was not removing this before I sewed it together. So let's not do that again. And I need my sewing needle, which is in my little blue box, which is here. So I use a, a tapestry needle it's got a slightly sharper end than a it's not a, a it's not a yarn needle this tapestry needle has a big shaft and large eye but it's a pointed thing for going through canvas and a bodkin is a big chunky thing like this but it's completely blunt at the end you couldn't sew through melted butter with it and that's for sewing knitting so that you don't split the yarn I'm full of useless facts me so uh, I don't have any embroidery thread in there to use so I need to I've got some here that this this should do mm, purple and green oh it's going on the spine it doesn't really matter Oh, actually, no, this is metallic. It's hard to sew with that one. Let me grab my tin. Put that away before I stab myself with it. Oh, my sewing tin is further away than I thought. Hang on a second. Hi, boo-boo. What are you doing? What are you doing? How What are you doing? Hi. Oh. Mm. I've got loads of green, I might as well use green since the cover is green. And then you want three times the length of the spine. Oop, yeah, 50 50 chance of pulling the wrong end, and I manage to do it every time. <sighs> it's like USB cords. They're only the right way around the third time you change it. There we go. Not that end. This one. Oh, that one's getting caught up as well. Stop it. Hmm. 
No. Okay. One, two, three. Three times the length is way too long, but at least you run out, run out of thread. And depending on whether you want your outer string to be on the outside or the inside, you start from the outside or the inside. So I'm going to start on the outside because I like my strings on the outside, not in the middle of my book. And you go in and out, in and out. Wrap that round your finger so you don't lose the thread on the end. You go up and down and back up this one. Oop. There we go. Try not to go through the thread you've already sewn. So down and up. Just get that caught on something. This does happen with a junk journal once you've already added bits to it, you get it caught on all sorts of stuff. Okay, down, let's try that one again. So you've gone up and down and up and down through the top, and then you come back up through the hole you started. All the stitching out of the way. Come on, you can do it. Oh, it wasn't in the hole. <laughs> up and down. Then you go back up the other way. So down and up. the hole again. Okay. You can't stand the tails in the inside. Yeah, I can't either. And I don't put dangles on the outside either. So keep going to the end. And then Hold that string out of the way with your thumb and finger so you don't get it caught when you go back up through the hole. Because you don't want to go through your thread, otherwise you can't tighten it. Back up through the outside and what you should be left with, if you've done it correctly, and it all hinges, it all hinges on going in one hole and then remembering if you're at the top, you go that way. So you go up to the nearest end. So this is nearer the, this end. So you go that way. And that's what you should end up with. So the gap there is covered by the knot you're going to tie in a second. But first, we're going to just... Ease these out a little bit. So that goes up there. Like that. So the tails are approximately the same length. And then you do a square knot, which is left over right right over left and 
Now I usually leave the tails on the outside because I use that to bind it into the cover if I put a cover on it. Uh, but more often than not, I use these. I put a bit of tape through that and then I stick that to the covers so that this is loose. Because if you, if you sew this to the binding, all of your covers are moving together with the binding. So you've only got that much lateral movement. If you stitch it to a piece of ribbon and have it separate from the cover, you've got that, which means it opens completely flat. You'll get a lot of people make a, a sewn to the binding one and then say, oh, look, it opens completely flat. And what they actually mean is it opens like that. <laughs> Each signature only opens that way. But once you start filling it up, it's not going to open flat. It's going to be like this. So mine always open completely flat because I sew them to a, a fabric binding and then onto a spine. So this is, this is completely separate. The bit that's holding the cover together is completely separate to the bit that is holding, that, to the bit here where these signatures will be sewn onto. So the signatures will only be sewn onto this bit middle which lifts up separate to the back of the book so it works like a proper bound book a little tip for you there you don't have to do that some people don't care if their books lie flat but if you're an artist or if you use watercolor or anything like that you'll want your books to lie flat okay so that's a signature that i may or may not bind into a book with this one for now, I will put it up there. Now we got to do this one. And while I'm at it, I will chain, I will sort the binding on this while I've got everything out of it. I always have some spare writing paper in the back as well. So I've got drawing paper in the front and writing paper in the back. I suppose I could just put that on there with the drawing paper, couldn't I? That would be the most sensible thing to do with it, and then I'll know where it is. So I don't really bind blank paper into my books. I add blank paper as tippings and stuff. Okay, I'm gonna do the same with this one now because I don't wanna add any more to this one and it's in the, or, in the order that I want it to be. So, quick rerun, here we go. Put your ruler down in the back Clip it on one side. Oh, I don't need to do that yet. Hang on. I'm going to put the thing in first. Turn it round. Whoops. Put your ruler down on the inside. Ugh. She's finished the spreadsheet. Yay! Go Mika. She's working on my spreadsheets for me, updating them all. Make sure that everything is where you want it to be. You can usually tell if you look at it that way, you can usually see if it's pushed down far enough in the spine. Sometimes you have to do it manually to get it all together. You can also feel when you go like that, whether the middle spine and the back spine creases match each other now this one might be a little tricky to sew because I put duct tape on the back of this because the paper was giving out uh, the paper started to split uh, from just use basically um, so I had to add a bit of duct tape which is sticky which means it's going to be a bit of a nuisance to try and sew but we'll do it anyway so on my bits of paper, I always have a top and a left marked so that all my books are all done with exactly the same template. Tuck 
れないおイラッチメモリーオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディオーディ The spine, if I'm going to. That way, I've always got matching thread. I'll put my needle on there so I don't lose it. The catalogue. Excited to do a joint journal again because last time the problem was trying trying to get the holes in the right place. Yeah, you just got to be a little bit careful with binding it, but not binding it flat. Holding it like this when you put the holes through and when you sew it is so much better. This one may not work as well because it's not even. That one was even because it's finished. This one is thin on one side and thick on the other, so this one might go a little bit awry. But I don't care about that. If you do care about it, then don't bind your journals until they're finished. And don't try and put your all all the way through. Just as long as it comes out into the magazine or whatever you're punching into, which you can hear it when it happens, it makes kind of a noise at the end where it's going through multiple thin pages. As long as it's gone all the way through, you can then pick it up and push the all so that it goes all the way through and you've got a full size hole. Okay, so again, holding it in a V, bang on the spine. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's bang on the spine, that one. First one nearly always is. After that, it gets a little bit meh. No, that's bang on the spine too. And it's not, you know, it's not any special skill, this. All I'm doing is being careful about how I put it together and how I hold it when I push the holes in. This is going to keep coming apart now because it's getting sticky because of the duct tape. Um, but this isn't anything that other people can't do. This is not luck or practice or whatever. This is simply... I'm careful about when I, what I do and how I do it. Every single one of these holes is coming out right on the, the crease of the spine. It's not magic, <laughs> it's measuring. <laughs> there's magic and there's science, this is science. Oh, that one's a little bit off, but it's No, it's kind of got a double bit on the spine there, so that's okay. I'm okay with that. The spine's a little bit crooked, so it can't be expected to go through the middle of a crooked spine, can it? And, whoa, 12 for 12. All holes work. Excellent. And then we just got to sew it together. So, start on the inside or the outside, depending on where you want to sew it from. This is going to be a little tricky again because of that sticky stuff on the duct tape. I have to push it through that way and then go whichever way you have 
the most the shortest distance so this one is nearer the top so I'm going to go this way and as long as you follow that rule you should always come out right Don't pull the stitches too tight, That's you can do that at the end and try not to go through your thread. Use your finger on the back to push the thread out of the way so you can go down beside the thread instead of through it. turn it around and go the other way it's down up down up if you can go down up down up I can't hear anything I've done it again <laughs> thanks Sue Twice I've done that in the same week. I can't believe I've done that. It's going to be easier to just leave it there now and just pull it out afterwards. I need to make a new thread guide anyway. Thanks for trying. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I've done that twice. <laughs> Stop! Oh, idiot. <laughs> Miss Maddie's looking at me like, you're so stupid, Mum. How did you survive so long? You're so stupid. Yeah, I think it's you, Kit. Oh. I think I've broken the nail. Don't know how to manage that, but you tried. Yeah, you did try. It's a valiant effort, but. Okay, and push this out of the way. I really need to make a new one anyway. Next year's books will be bound slightly differently or Christmas book will be bound slightly differently. And by January, I'll probably have lost this anyway. So I'll make a new one for next year. <laughs> OK, so there we go. Now we just need to Uh, this one needs to go back there a little bit. And you just ease your stitches. You get used to where you have to pull the stitches, but basically if you put your finger underneath and pull it upwards, they'll end up going in the right direction and you'll get used to how much you need to do it to make it work right. That tightens the stitching, but you don't want it too tight anyway. Otherwise, when you when you turn the pages in the book, they'll start to tear. So you don't want this so tight that it can't breathe. You're not lacing a corset here. You're binding a book. So one hand over the other. Other hand over the other. So your square, a square knot will go like a t-shape like that it's how you do a parcel otherwise it ends up going that way and then it doesn't sit right whereas if it hangs this way they both hang down if you do it so it hangs that way this one hangs out over it which is okay if you're going to stick um, things on it but it doesn't work for me like that so hopefully this is all bound together correctly I forgot to take my little bits out, but I don't think I've sewn any of them into the spine. <laughs> Except my board, because I'm an idiot. I've lost my toad off the front. I need to find him. Uh, yeah, these are all still in here. Yep, perfect. So... I'll keep this little bit so I've got the measurements. 
I don't think I can, I can fold this in half again. So I'll put it back in my box with my awl. And that can go in the bin. And this is what I did last time. I actually used the bit of paper I use as my guide to put my awl on. Okay, where did that come from? I don't know. I've got a frog missing. There he is. He keeps coming out. I might have to stick him down. He's supposed to sit there nicely. But he doesn't. He jumps around all over the place. I know, I'll pop a paper clip on you. And then I can colour you at some point if I want to. Probably never going to, but you know, the, uh, the thought is there. It's the thought that counts. There we go. Okay, so this is what it looks like. You see how it lies flat now? This is how it's going to lie flat in a book because it will be able to open to its fullest. Where did that little spider come from? He was, oh, he was in there. There we go. Manny! Stop. You're gross. Okay, it's two books bound. Let's do the inside of this while I'm on a roll. <laughs> this is fairly easy. All I want to do with this is basically cut a piece of this, which is not as easy as it sounds, to put on there and stick it down. Now this is a salve edge, which is quite nice. So I might put that in the front. So if that's halfway, it's going to be about there. About that wide? Yeah. This is difficult to tear, this stuff. So I actually end up doing it this way. Because it's not a it's not it's not um, cotton, it's polyester. So it's got a strange weave to it. It's kind of like crepe fabric. Let's take that out from under there so we don't cut that. Oh, Maddie, did you just fart? Holy mackerel. Jiminy Cricket. Woof. Let's double check that again. Now, this frays like the Jesus, <laughs> this stuff, as you can tell. So, since this is a salvage and these aren't, these are all going to fray. So I'm going to just trim off as much as I can of the excess, which is usually on nylon better to cut rather than... try to pull it because it all tangles up it's not like cotton that's not straight 
that's where I started losing the thing at the end. So let's straighten that bit up a bit. measuring anything I don't measure things so it's that bit there that needs to come off since I don't have pinking shears which is what you would do ideally for this kind of material uh, I'm going to use bit of glue on the edge. Do it on the back and I'm literally just going to run a bit of PVA glue Ooh, that edge, edge isn't straight either, is it? Oh, I haven't measured the length. Okay, there. So... On the back of the fabric, Ooh. oh, it drops on the desk. Big block of PVA. It's a toad, actually. It's not a frog. It's a frog. Of course, it's going to jump back. It's a toad. So there. Once that dries, you'll be able to trim off just those little tiny bits that are left and it shouldn't fray. it's fraying as I'm doing this that's why I'm that's why I'm bothering <laughs> it's not that I don't want don't like the fraying it's just that over time you know the frame is going to get out of control and then it will not be a secure binding anymore what do toads do besides listen to wind in the willows drive around in motor cars golf there were some really cool printables this year i think actually with michael's not having a lot in it did us a favor because all the americans got creative and made their own stuff i want to download those um tags that like the envelopes that i keep seeing listed on instagram 
before they disappear. That might have been too much glue. It doesn't matter, we're going to glue it down anyway, so it's not like it matters. Okay, where my cloth at? Oh, I probably should have thrown my cloth before I started doing this. Oh, there we go. Washable glue. Gotta love it. Yeah, I just put my fingers down in the glue. Ah! This is why I don't do messy art. Yeah, everybody said Michael's was really bad this year. And yet last year it was really good. There was loads. Unfortunately, I can't find any of the stuff you sent me last year. It's all in my Halloween bag, which I still haven't unearthed. Because I've still got a pile of fabric over on that chair. Courtney says it's under a pile of fabric. Uh, Cody says it's under a pile of fabric, so it should be on that chair over there. Okay, let's try not to get too messy with this. I know, I'll hang it over my coffee cup so it doesn't get stuck on anything. And I'll grab my Aileen's tacky glue. Come on Aileen, where are you? Come on, Aileen. Uh... No. No, really, where is Aileen? Oh, there she is. There she is. I see her. Hi, Boo Boo. I was not asking for Boo Boo. I was not asking for the Scooby of Doo. I was asking for Aileen. You're not Aileen. You're Scooby of Doo. Hi, Scooby Doo. You're a good boy. Okay, let's get all the dog hairs and stuff out from here, under here before we start. Oh, and I think I'll put that, let's clip those together. And I'll clip them onto the ruler so I can lift them up out of the way. Yeah, that'll work. So I can just lift them all up out of the way then. And now... All around the outside and all across the field. Yeah, four cats and a corgi trying to remove hair is just places more hair. Yeah, pretty much. The irony is I have a black dog and she shed, sheds white hair all over my black clothes. Okay, so this is the front and that's the front. Maybe should have done this before I strung it together, but hey, where would be the fun in that? So I'm going to lie it down where I want it to be on this side, and then I'm going, I think I've cut it too long, because it needs to come shorter than those. Oh, Pooh Bear. <sighs> Never mind. Do. Push that under there, work quickly, shouldn't have to 
too much of a problem. Shouldn't get it all over the place. Shouldn't get it all over the velvet. Go. Yeah, it's too long. I need to cut into it a little bit. So let's fit it from the top down because this is the neater edge. Fold it under at the bottom. In fact, let's fold it over at the top and the bottom. So I've got it stuck that end. Push it back up here. Fold it over up here as well. point it's getting too sticky. Ah, there's my... So Might have to stick these side bits down again. The spine is a bit lumpier than I thought it was going to be. But it's only edges. The rest of it should stick fine. And then that... glue down overnight. And if I have to re-glue these bits it's no big deal, it's just a little bit of tweaking. It's easy enough to lift them up and put a bit of glue underneath. As long as the spine sticks that's what's important. It's just to cover the crap. <laughs> And honestly, even if that's as good as it ever looks, that covers the ugliness underneath and it looks better. Once it's got stuff in it, it'll be fine. So I'm going to put that somewhere it won't get knocked over to dry. And a bit more rag. Done. Right. It's two books bound and a. Mm. This is dry. Two books bound and spine finished. Well, nearly finished. Just do some tidying up on it later. What else have I got? Yeah, I'll find, but okay, see you later. You have light and dark peds. Yeah, the light, I had black and white cats and they used to shed black hair onto my white stuff and white hair onto my dark stuff. I don't know how they knew to do that, but they managed it. How about this? Let me show you what I've got. I went to the thrifting. Uh, this one isn't thrifted. This is a book I've had forever. 
my favourite story, The Christmas Carol. Love it! It's actually got another story in here that I've never read called The Chirrup or something. The Chirp. The Chirp, I think. Yeah, I've never read it. I'm not a huge Dickens fan. I just love this story. So that is a spoiler for the Christmas Chronicles class. It's a theme we've done before, but it's a different theme. It, it's a different approach this year. So, but look at this beautiful book, isn't it pretty? It's actually styled the way the original book was, but obviously it's not, you know, it's not leather bound, it's not the same size, it's not anything, but it's got the same style on it. And I've had this for a very long time. <laughs> but what I also have is these. Now, because I'm doing a junk journal for Christmas, I don't have any Christmas books or anything, so I went thrifting. I found this, which was brand new. Look, even the dust jacket is in perfect condition. And it's a book of Christmas, Everything We Once Knew and Loved About Christmas Time by Jane Struthers. It's a hardback book, but it's it's a new book. It's not a vintage book or anything. But it's got lots of little tidbits in it, like development of the nativity scenes and why nativity scenes started and um, historical facts about Christmas, the Star of Bethlehem and whether it, you know, could it have been a, a supernova, a comet, a planet, star facts that we know, is it symbolic and such, uh, the different types of angels, sing choirs of angels, you know, all the different types of angels. Um, the Magi, the Shepherds, so this is all about the Christmas stuff. Um, the beginning is all about Christmas calendars and where the calendar came from and why it's on December the 25th and who made it that and starting with Yule and all that kind of thing. The Christmas calendar according to the church, right the way through to Candlemas, which is when you traditionally used to take your Christmas decorations down. Uh, the Lord of Misrule which is an English tradition. It's a very English book. Most of it is English traditions. Um, I need to find an English word that would be spelt wrong in America to see if it's written by an English author. I think she is English. I think with a name like Jane Struthers, she probably is English. She sounds like an English school mom who lives in an old cottage somewhere. <laughs> it's interesting because it's the folklore. It's not just, yeah, it's a bit of everything. It's the church, it's the folklore, it's the traditions, it's the carols, it's everything. Feast of Advent, astronomical points of the year. Um, St Stephen's Day, it's an English book. Stephen's Day is Boxing Day and nobody else celebrates St Stephen's Day but the English. So it's definitely the, the Boxing Day hunts and all that. The Laws as it was when this book was written, which I think is 2012. Yeah, uh, since then the um, fox hunting has been banned. Uh, Christmas events, so all the way through from 1066 with the coronation of William the Conqueror right the way through to 2003. Yeah, so she was probably researching this is 2003 and she didn't do 2003 to 2012, but there's plenty of room here to make some notes about stuff. Uh, tidings of great joy. So this one is the nativity section. Um, then you got Ho Ho Ho, so I'm guessing this is about St Nicholas and Santa Claus. The Oranges and Father Christmas, The Old Gods, The Story of St Nick. Isn't it cool? Victorian Father Christmas. The Commercialisation of Father Christmas. Sinterklaas. Chriskin. Stockings. Right into Father Christmas. The Names of the Reindeer. All odd bits and pieces that you'd want to know about Christmas. It's so cool. In our father's footsteps. So boy bishops. I don't know about this. Commercial production. Oh, compliments of the season. Christmas cards. 
Oh, so the origins of stuff. Early post, the penny post, Christmas stamps, the Glastonbury thorn, which is Joseph of Arimathea and or Avalon, depending on what you believe. The Yule Log, Friendly Fire, Hunting the Wren, uh, Seeing in the New Year, so New Year's Resolutions, The History of New Year's Resolutions, Callening, Hogmanay, Feeding Your Cattle, First Footing, The Real Meaning of Old Lang Syne, Awesome. This is really cool. And then you've got festive feast section. I bet this has got Mrs. Beaton in here somewhere. Take a leg of mutton. <laughs> the recipe for mince pie comes from the English housewife by Gervais Markham, which was the first published in 1615. It was the practice at the time the recipe gives only general guidelines about the ingredients because it was assumed that everybody knew how to cook and therefore didn't need detailed instructions. <laughs> so take a leg on the button and shove it in the oven. <laughs> oh, Christmas pie, Yorkshire Christmas pie. It'll have Christmas pudding in here as well. Oh, festive menu, there you go, Isabella Beaton. I didn't know her cookbook was published after her death, when she died in childbirth, and edited by her publisher husband. Huh. Her suggested bill of fare for a December dinner for ten people. Scottish foods, haggis and all that stuff. Ugh. Christmas cooking, how to make perfect roast potatoes and bread sauce. This is cool. I haven't really looked through this, but I, I just flipped through it and I just thought it looked fun. Trifle. Oh, it's my favourite. I love trifle. It's not the drinking, but the excess. <laughs> Game Glass of Bishop. Oh, how to make different punches and stuff. Hot chocolate, mulled wine. Deck the Halls, the Tannenbaum, Christmas trees, Starry Night, Paradise trees, German traditions of Paradise trees. I like it. Oh, different types of spruce tree. How interesting is that? So fur, so good. <laughs> different types of blue spruce, phaser fir. Noble fir, Nordman, Norway spruce, Scots pine. That's so cool. Out and about, so planting for the birds. How to keep the birds fed through the winter. Roast and roasting crab apples to put out, hang out on the tree. Building a, how to build a snowman. How to build a snowman. How to build a snowman properly. Christmas greenery, different types of greenery that's available. The mistletoe mythology and the holly and the ivy. We've done these before. These are all stories that I've told. I don't know if you know about my Christmas Chronicles class, but I tell stories. I do it with the Halloween Chronicles as well. I like to do storytelling. Um, so I tell different stories of like the story of the mistletoe and how Robin's got their red breasts and all that kind of stuff. The holly and the ivy. First attacks on Christmas. Ooh. Enter the Puritans. And the Luther Lutherans. Christmas fruit pies. DIY Christmas stuff. Isn't this cool? Christmas Eve superstitions. If you want to ensure that you'll be the, at the peak of health throughout the coming 12 months, eat an apple at midnight on Christmas Eve. Yeah, 
why I never understood why they would get rid of the the U in things like colour, but then add extra words to describe things. They describe things like Germans do. They just chunk loads of words together until they get an explanation of what they want. Doesn't make any sense. Hijinks, wonderful parties, wonderful games, wonderful unanimous, 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 no, happiness. It's Charles Dickens things. It's from Christmas Carol. Bullet pudding. <sighs> Sounds like a soldier's game, that one. Snapdragon, party pieces, hunt the thimble, blind man's buff, charades. This is awesome. Mumming. Nutcracker. Oh, Christmas Stories, Nutcracker, Peter Pan, the Harlequinades. Christmas on paper. Writers about, oh, writers who've done poems about winter. Christmas stories, diary stories about Christmas. From journal to diary. Ooh. Oh, oh, I was right. I've always thought that the difference between a journal and a diary was a journal is a book of days. So you write in it according to however much you want to write in it. And a diary is dated. So a journal is something that you date yourself and a diary is something that is pre-printed. And it says here, until the early 1800s, there was no such thing as a printed diary with a space allocated for each day of the year. Anyone who felt like it simply recorded their thoughts in a journal, a plain notebook in which they could write as much or as little as they liked every day if they chose or whenever the spirit moved them. So there you go. What's the difference between a journal and a diary? A diary is printed. A journal is blank. John Evelyn, Samuel Pepys, famous Christmas people. Samuel Pepys started his journal on the 1st of January. That's why he's always in there. And he's one of the most famous diarists ever. Parson Woodford, Mr. Pooter, Adrian Mull, <laughs> aged 13 and three quarters. The Dead of Winter, the Christmas story, the turn of the, sh turn of the screw, Dickens. What a cool book. Sorry, I got a bit carried away with that one, but what a cool book. I love that. So it's called The Book of Christmas by Jane Struthers. We all. Oh, Eddie Izzard. <laughs> um, this one. This is in very good condition and I'm a little bit loath to take it apart. Again, it's a new book. It's not a it's from the British Library. It's not an old edition. Um, 1989. So it's vintage, but it's not it's not out of copyright. So I can't scan it. or it, Well, I can scan it for personal use, but I can't scan it. I could scan it for the future, I suppose. Um, but I bet if you go on the British Library um, website you can probably find Im these images on the British Library website for free and print them out there's hundreds of vintage images and book images on the British Library website um, this is all the book plates but look at this isn't it beautiful it's all verses from the Bible telling the Christmas story um, where's it from it's just a Words taken from the Tyndale translation of the Bible from the Gospels of St. Matthew and St. Luke. And it's using various pages. So we've got the Annunciation. Nativity. Oh, they skipped the whole donkey to Bethlehem bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The shepherds. Look at all this beautiful. Oh, I'd love to be able to do this kind of stuff. Isn't it beautiful? I was watching a, a documentary about the Voynich manuscript, and every time I see it, I'm like, that is somebody's art journal. 
and they always assume it's written by a man and it's a medical text of some sort and it's to do with herbalism and stuff i bet you anything it's some woman or girl somewhere who wasn't supposed to be able to write was very wealthy knew how to read and write was bored because she had nothing to do because women weren't allowed to do anything and she just spent her t entire life just writing a book in her own code and drawing fancy fantasy things they always make out that it's going to be this well it's got to be major thing that's got to be decoded and uh, and it's got to be written by a man and this that and the other and nobody ever just thinks maybe it was just a fun thing written by somebody who was bored because seriously who would have that kind of time to dedicate to something like that to have the quality of the parchment and the quality of the inks it's all mineral pigments and the ability to purchase all of that because that would have been really expensive and the time to do that you're not talking about a man who's working all the time you're talking about somebody who's got a lot of time on their hands and a lot of money and a good imagination sounds like a woman to me i reckon the voynich manuscript by a woman anyway i thought this was really beautiful and i'm a little bit a little bit loath to cut it up but i probably will if i'm honest this one cody it's beautiful isn't it a medieval Christmas in association with the British Library. I did think of you when I saw it, actually. It's a very nice book. Maybe I'll just, um, maybe I'll send it to you and just scan a couple of bits out of it that I want. For It's personal use, so I can scan it for me. Maybe I'll do that and just send it to you, because you'd appreciate it as an actual book. <laughs> anyway. And then I found this. I think that's the reasoning back at those times, just because I'm bored. Yeah, well, well, what else were you going to do? And if you can afford min mineral pigments and things, you can afford candles. And that is the most important thing. You can afford candles. So you can do stuff in the evenings when other people are not about. So you can work in secret. I reckon it's some woman who just didn't want to do needlework and had the means and the money and the time to be able to just play. It's an art journal. That's what I reckon. Do you ever wonder what people will think in the future when they find our junk journals? Do you, do you ever think, like, will they, will they look at all this vintage ephemera and go, well, it looks like vintage ephemera, but actually it's, it's fake. It's all fake ephemera. <laughs> of course one day the stuff that we class as modern will be vintage so i put modern stuff in my journals because why use vintage stuff when in 20 years my stuff's going to be vintage i do like vintage stuff but this is again this is a new book it's not a it's um good housekeeping magazine from 1922 to 1962 all the christmas spits um I can't see the publishing date. Oh, it's a, another late 80s. Somebody obviously got rid of all their late 80s Christmas books in the same shop. <laughs> but look at all this. It's got all sorts of stuff. It's got um, stories and poems and advertising and all sorts. Absolutely fascinating. fashion of the time these are all articles from the magazine so this is the page from the magazine this bit here look at that poppy look at that poppy the bonzo series of jigsaw puzzles bonzo the dog oh <laughs> now see him I, I cut him out bonzo the world famous study dog a striking model made in hand-colored velveteen Ooh. <laughs> small sitting mode price eight and sixpence jointed mode to sit or stand ten and sixpence <sighs> that's expensive standing model with patent spring 
Oh, patent spring legs enabling the dog to perform a variety of tricks. 18 and sixpence. Oof, that's like two years wages. <laughs> Boots. Boots the chemist. Or when it was Boots the department store. Again, this is very English because Good Housekeeping is an English magazine. Christmas Day in the dustbin. Get her what she really wants for Christmas and a bright electric hoover. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Say thank you, darling. Just what I've always wanted. It's a hoover. <laughs> oh, you found it on Amazon. Oh, cool. People who don't celebrate Christmas. That's an interesting thing to include in a, a magazine. People who don't do Christmas, like Japanese children, don't do Christmas, apparently. Well, they wouldn't because they're not Christians, are they? Although plenty of people do do Christmas who aren't Christians. Tokens and vouchers. Treat her to a facial. Give her something that she'll never buy for herself. You're right. <laughs> so funny. What it means to be a peer for life. Oh, because Christmas Day, you made a, is Christmas Day speeches when the peers happens. Where's the wartime ones? 1942. And again. Potatoes. <laughs> yeah, potatoes for Christmas. Every time you use a potato, use potatoes in place of bread, you're helping to save British lives. Don't know what that's got to do with anything, but... Ministry approved food. Potato cakes with onions. Scotch potato scones. Hampton pie, which is basically four different types of potatoes. Potato and leek hot pot. Potato and cheese galatine. Winter salad. So cold potatoes. Ugh. There is nothing worse than cold potatoes. Cold potatoes are just evil. NATO decreed that lips should be luscious. <laughs> Presents at Christmas. The origin of presents. Buy him a watch. A wrist watch instead of a pocket watch. I just think this is fascinating. Look at these old dresses, aren't they gorgeous? Oh. Frivolities for the gay. 1933. Exquisite Russell and Allen gowns. Housekeeper's Dictionary of Facts, The Christmas Menu, How to Make Cranberry Sauce, Brandy Sauce, Chestnut Stuffing. Oh, this is really cool, actually. I love these. Ginger from Jamaica, an exotic root mingle. <laughs> Nowadays, we want ginger, we just pop to the nearest shop. They even sell it in our 7-Eleven. But I thought this would be really cool for using the pages for a junk journal for Christmas instead of just having blank pages. But it's also got lots of fun facts and things that I can cut out and cool illustrations and things. Fox's Glacier Mints. Your birthday is on the 6th. Cool. Two years running, you got a hoover of some type that you'd asked for as a birthday gift from your husband. Well, if you asked for it, that's okay. So yeah, those are for my Christmas stuff. 
from my little thrifting expedition and those cost me a grand total of five pounds and they will last me I think probably forever. <laughs> I'm tempted to take the book block out of this one and actually use this for a cover actually because I kind of like the cover but maybe not. Don't know. I haven't decided what I'm doing for Christmas journal yet but I have fodder for it which is what is necessary. <sighs> All the girls in his office call you weird, but you're just old fashioned. Just some people are old fashioned. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just imagining the look on my sister's face if her bloke gave her a hoover for Christmas. <laughs> although eventually she'd probably like it because she's a Virgo and she likes everything to be perfect my mum would love a new hoover for Christmas hashtag Taurus right let's get rid of bits of paper we don't need he needs to go in the back of my book oh other book over there uh I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I've showed you my new finds. I've found my books, which is good. I've been meaning to do that for a while and not actually got around to it. I think I'm going to have to stick this guy in because even with a paper clip, he's not staying put. Uh, he's the witch's hat, I reckon. He definitely needs a little witch's hat, doesn't he? I've got glue all over my fingers. Oh, the dust! Oh, that's a good idea! Yes, because I hate dust covers. Absolutely hate dust covers. But yeah, that would be good, wouldn't it? Use that as a cover on a bit of cardboard. Yes, what a good idea. Thank you, Tara. And I can just cover up the name and do or do something different oh that's really cool I like that idea yes good thinking Batman because this is the, I mean this is a plastic book anyway it doesn't need a dust cover it just makes it look fancy but the dust cover is in perfect condition so I could actually use it and make like fold this in and make pockets and stuff excellent idea could even repaint this in brighter colours and do some gold leaf on it or something. Good idea. I will do that. So at some point that will be a job to do is making a new cover for my Christmas book. Ooh. But let's try and get October finished first. <laughs> So this is now October going into dis into dis November and then December will just be my Christmas Chronicles book. I don't think I'll keep a separate journal because it's been quite difficult actually doing um, two journals side by side. I like having my Chronicles book separate um, but having a journal as well as a Chronicles book I think is not really necessary. So I think this one would have been easier if I just included the few bits for for October those bits in here would have been easier sparkles yes a bit of um what are they called twinkle twinkle things what they're like sparkles but they're not sparkles what are they called uh I don't know the little bottles of sparkly stuff that comes out like a paint and you right with it little tubes of stuff sprinkle spring no not sprinkles ah oh, can't can't think what they're called but yes lots of lots of sparkly stuff to go on and i've got some metallic green and all sorts but i need to finish this one first it is glitter but it's like in a suspension i think it might be ranger so this one I need to sew 
into the binding and then I can take the elastic off to reuse on another book. Um, anything else? Glitter glue, yeah. It's like glitter glue, that's what it is, but it's proper... It's actually got a name. Twinkles. It's not Twinkling H2O. It's a ranger one. Little bottles of... Little bottles of cute stuff that's got sparkles in it. Ugh, it's going to bug me now. I'm going to have to go and find out. Um, anything else to update you on? Oh, yes. So finish the damn book. How's that going? <laughs> I'm doing quite well with finish the damn book up to a point. I have finished that damn book. I can now put that one away. I'm almost finished this damn book and then I can put this one away and start the Christmas one. This damn book is going to be finished by the end of November and I haven't started a new one. So that's working like gangbusters. I've read five of my audiobooks that I had sitting on my list that I've had for over two years and haven't read. So I've been putting those on while I was journaling and doing stuff. And my bullet journal, I haven't picked up. I've done virtually nothing in it. I don't know why. I can't get back into it. Now I've stopped using it for a while. Every time I restart it, it's just like... It's like trying to get my car started. It's just not happening. I have lots of scribbled notes in here about classes and stuff, but I'm not really using it on a daily basis. I'm more using it to organise class sessions and things. So I'm wondering if maybe I'll keep this as a class notebook going forward and find a different way of doing my daily organisation because this is getting unwieldy. I love this book. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love this book. 400 page moleskins is what I've lived for. Oh goody, fireworks have started. Um, I love, 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 love this book. And I will buy another when I'm finished, but I'll get a soft cover to go in here. But I think using it for organising my classes is better because it lasts a long time. It's got everything in here. It keeps it together. Maybe I need to do something else from my bullet journal. So what I'm thinking of doing is pulling out my traveller's notebook. Because my traveller's notebook, especially with the size of my writing, the width of the traveller's notebook is more conducive to writing lists of organisation stuff and little notes and, you know, diary entries and stuff like that. It just, it works better, I think. You're trying to finish the damn book, but you're having issues finishing the damn book. Well, stickles! Jen, I love you. Thank you. I knew, I knew they had a special name. Stickles. That's exactly what I meant. <sighs> Thank you for that. That would have driven me crazy this evening, trying to remember what they were called. I would have to have gone and find them. I think they're over in that corner, so I actually would have been able to find them, but... You have 250 pages left. Excellent. I know Risha can't start her book until December. It's a daily December book. I've still got a Stephen King book that I'm desperately trying to finish, but I just can't get into it. I'm halfway through it and I can't get into it. Revival. It's the fairground one. Which is weird because I read another one of his carnival ones and I actually really enjoyed it. But I cannot get into this one at all. It's kind of weird I don't know I've never had so much trouble trying to finish a Stephen King book because even the ones that I don't like I still enjoy if that makes sense I enjoy reading them even if I don't like the story because he's such a good writer but yeah revival I'm struggling to revive that one uh, and then I have the 32 hours of Jonathan Strange in Mr Norell Again, Susanna Clark, one of my favourite writers. She's right up there with Stephen King, but I cannot get into that damn book. I don't know if it's because it's so long, because the, the revival one is 10 hours long as well. So maybe it's because it's such a long book, but I'm sure I've, I've read like series of books where I've read one after the other after the other, where they've all been four hours long and I've read five of them. And that's a 20 hour stint. So I don't, 
really understand why I can't get into a big book like that. But yeah, I'm determined to finish Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell before the end of the year. If it kills me. <laughs> Even if I have to put it on while I fall asleep and then let it run during the night, at least I've listened to it. <laughs> I might have been asleep when it was playing, but at least I've heard it. <laughs> Subliminally. <laughs> oh, who, who writes a book that's 32 hours long? Oh. Anyway. Yes, I'm thinking of getting my traveller's notebook out. So that will be Wednesday. I will update you on that. We'll do a Bujo session and I will update you on what I'm doing and because I was watching Courtney the other day and she's using a traveller's notebook for her bullet journal and for her junk journal. Now, for a junk journal, it's, it's just never going to happen. Um, but, yeah, I think for a bullet journal, it might be better because it's not so big and chunky and heavy. And But I can't use a, a small journal. I've tried the pocket moleskins. They're just too small. I can't, I can't be doing with a small journal, but a thin journal... That would work, I think. Separate books have a beginning, middle, and end, so you'd be more like a roller coaster. Oh, yeah, good point. See, this one is done in flashbacks, and I do have, I do struggle with that kind of stuff. Time travel books, oh my god. You don't even want to know <laughs> how many notes I had to keep to get through the time traveller's wife. And even then, I ended up, it took me so long to read the book. I got the book when it first came out because it sounded really interesting. It took me so long to read the book that the movie was out before I got anywhere near the middle of the book. So I watched the movie so I'd have an overview of what was going on. <laughs> and that made it a bit easier to understand. But oh my God, going up and down and backwards and forwards and meeting yourself coming backwards. Oh my God can't 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 handle it <laughs> oh at least with doctor who they go there and they stay there for an episode they don't keep going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and zipping all over the place but when you're reading a book you know they can be anywhere and sometimes he didn't even know what time zone what time he was in he would just go off and something would happen and he'd wake up somewhere and you wouldn't know when it was and you're like well what was the point in that bit yeah oh pelican i'm literally just wrapping up literally just wrapping up i've found two books uh i've done a big journal flip of both of these um and i've glued a spine in my other book here this is looking good I like this it's gonna need this needs to dry obviously it's stained a little bit but it'll be fine and I'll have to stick this back down on one side but the back of it looks like it's sticking okay uh yeah so I've done that uh I've also bound this one together and I did a flip of that one I think yep and I've flipped Christmas books so you've got about three hours of recording to watch <laughs> once we finish <laughs> So, but thanks for joining us and uh, I will see you all again soon. I will do, ah, well, don't forget this, this week's time zones were all a bit out because our, t our clocks have changed and I don't think anywhere else's clocks have changed. I think it's only European clocks that have changed. Everybody else changes next week. So everything's a bit out this week. Yeah, I don't very well often do later than about seven o'clock in the evening. Because usually by then I've already done a full day's work and I'm like, oh, <laughs> I do evening sessions with my patrons. Like last night we did a Halloween get together and we were still journaling at like eight o'clock, I think. Half past eight, something like that. So another two hours. <laughs> right then.
thanks for joining me and I will see you again next week. Wednesday will probably be a bullet journal day and then hopefully by Friday I'll have a bit more information about the Christmas Chronicles for you guys. Hopefully. Uh, don't forget, buzz back to the top of the video if you want your discount codes because they finish sometime tomorrow morning depending on what time zone you're in. Um, I went through all of that at the beginning and uh, I will see you all again next week. Thanks guys. Bye.